Three times, I think. Okay. Uh, it being uh, 2.30, a quorum of the board is present. Uh, so the meeting of the elect Montgomery County Board of Elections, December 15th, will come to order. Uh, the first item of business is public comment. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, uh, Dolly Kildee has requested to speak to the board this afternoon. <coughs> right. We got here just in time. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board and staff, uh, as it is the practice of the Democratic Central Committee to make the voting experience as friendly and efficient as possible and improve it if necessary, we encourage volunteers to give feedback on their experience at the polls. Today I want to present the report of Alan Banov, Chair of the Voter Protection Committee. The report is in two parts, the positive experiences and situations needing improvement. Uh, the positive experiences, we very much appreciate your giving us CDs of maps of the polling places, which let us see at a glance the election, electioneering boundaries. Thank you also for the election judge's manual. We hope this will be a permanent policy of the board. Finally, whenever we advise board members or its council of issues, they investigate it promptly and always produce good results. Furthermore, they advised us of their actions soon after they took them. Concerning the situations that need improvement, there are 11. I'll go through them briefly, and they're detailed in the chair's letter. <coughs> some boundaries are still not practicable for electioneering and not observed by some judges. Please start with the premise that candidates of every persuasion and party have a First Amendment right to communicate their positions to voters as long as they do not coerce or intimidate voters. Number two, we, all, we had too many situations in which the chief judge would not post vote, to vote totals by party at 10 and 3. The totals are of no value unless they include the breakdowns. The judge's manual advises chief judges to only provide vote totals. Please revise the manual to make clear that they include party breakdown. Three, notification of polling place changes. The board mails sample general ballots to all registered voters, which helps a great deal. However, when a polling place is changed after many years, some voters go to their old polling place. In precinct 1344, voters may have been misinformed about their actual polling place. We ask that you do more to inform voters. Number four, Thurgood Marshall is very difficult to get to by public transportation. It is about a 15-minute walk from the nearest bus stop. This was a change of polling place for Brown Station voters who felt they did not receive sufficient notification of the change. Also, on election day, there was no notice of Brown Station that the polling place was changed. Number five, also we found that signage in general could be more visible. One example was Gaithersburg High. If you miss the turn, you must park off in the distance or go back out to 355 and maneuver your way back in. Number six, the board can improve signage about access to early voting places for disabled persons, especially at the Silver Springs Civic Center. Voters leaving the garage do not see signs indicating that there is a handicapped access door in the back of the building. Precinct 614 originally voted at Stone Mill were moved to Shady Grove Conference Center, back to Stone Mill, and back again to Shady Grove. The issues include parking and handicapped access. For some, it took a half hour to park. Apparently, these concerns were brought to the board's attention, but without any change. They also asked that the handicapped parking be checked. Precinct 1347, in 2012, the board went through a lengthy period of trying to find a suitable polling place. The community and the board all agreed on Montgomery College. However, parking there is a major problem and is seen as a deterrent to voting. Please continue to look for a more convenient place. Precinct 1303, the electioneering boundaries had been set by the chief judge during the guide, according to the guidelines. At the primary, another judge came out and attempted to change those boundaries. After the volunteers enlisted the assistant of the chief judge, the problem was solved for that day. At the general election, the same judge was more aggressive. He came out in the middle of the afternoon and began moving the signs and tables to where he decided the boundaries should be. Again, the volunteers approached the chief judge who put the boundaries back where they were originally. 
Number 10, the candidate filing. When a central committee member tried to file her finance report, there was no record of her candidacy. She had to redo all the paperwork, and the State Board of Elections suggested it be reported to the local board. And finally, based on the personal observation of an MCDCC member at early voting, there were many voters with limited mobility <coughs> who would have benefited from having the use of a wheelchair. Judges at the site were in agreement. Therefore, we recommend that you look into whether having one wheelchair at each of the early voting sites is feasible. We look forward to discussing these issues with you and thank you for your consideration. Thank you for uh, what I think is a uh, very well thought out and, and presented report. Um, I'm especially grateful that uh, specific uh, things are called to our attention, specific issues, but along with it some um, suggested solutions. <laughs> and um, I, I, in reading through this, um, there are a number of these that I was aware of either through the time I was going around mm -hmm. or um, that I heard, subsequently heard from, mm -hmm. from people. Uh, so I think all of these are something to be taken uh, seriously. Uh, if I could ask you a question about the wheelchair, um, what, what strikes me is that uh, I would think people who, who need whe wheelchair uh, uh, assistance come, come with one. it, mm -hmm. but is this something that's uh, because of how one has to, to vote? Uh, well, the person that recommended it was spent a lot of time at Germantown. So I don't know if that was an issue there or this, that's why I say mm -hmm. it was a general mm -hmm. observation by her just to being Germantown all the time, that it would have been, it would have helped to have a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. But obviously they didn't need one or they probably would have had one. Uh, and my other question is on the uh, finance mm -hmm. report, uh, that is not something that uh, our board gets involved with. Do candidates have to, though, file here and then it goes to the state, or what? what is the situation with that? Uh, no, they file directly with the State Board of Elections. I, I have, uh, I saw this letter just literally moments before this meeting because I was not copied on it. And I have forwarded to our campaign finance person, but um, even if they were to take the paperwork, here, it would still be, they would electronically, all of the data is entered into the state database. But who enters it? Well, we would help the candidate, whoever the candidate is, enter it into the system here using one of our computers. But the candidate is the person who files the document electronically. You don't file paper documents any longer. <coughs> So, yeah, I, but I'm at, I, I sent this letter to uh, our campaign finance person and asked them to, you know, look into it and get back to me. When you say your campaign finance person, you mean the county's campaign finance person? The person who helps facilitate the, fin the uh, filing of these reports. Filing of these reports. On, on, on the staff Over here. here. Yeah, but I mean, again, it's entering the data into the state. Uh, what's it called? What is the state's? Electra. 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 State yeah, Electra. Yeah, and now it's going to be something new come Correct. January 1st. And, and, and what about this idea that there was no record of her candidacy? If she filed her candidacy here, um, does that then get transmitted to the state? It's entered directly into the system. Yeah. Margaret, do they come here to do that? No, they can do it at home. They do it at home. You, so you can file to run for but office at home. You can it sounds like here. this person must have here. done it here. Well, I don't know. And it know. didn't transmit for well, some well, reason. Well, I don't know. Well, no, yeah. she was on the ballot, so clearly it, it Oh, no, she had to redo it. I mean, that, I right. guess she found out in right. time. But I mean, but she was on the ballot in the primary. Mm -hmm. So so clearly, whatever she did to file her candidacy, it worked because she was on the ballot. So, um, but it sounds like some system didn't have a record of her candidacy even though she was on the ballot. She's filing a financial report. It looks like she files it with the state and the state tells her to report it to us. And I guess my question is like, what is, why is the state, and I understand we don't speak for the state, but if the state is telling her to report it to us, why are they doing that? Are they suggesting that there's something that we should be doing differently or? Um, 
or you know what 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 is our role in all of that if, if she's if there's no record of her candidacy because clearly she was on the ballot mm -hmm. I can only get back to you with regards okay. to all of those legitimate questions mm -hmm. yeah well uh, please please do put that on uh, the agenda if you would for the next meeting because generally we don't have to get into the finance things but I I'd just be <coughs> curious I think we want to follow mm -hmm. up on that and see uh, are there any other uh, questions for uh, or comments for Dolly uh, from board members? I have a question. Um, the board spent a lot of time, as you know, um, on <coughs> precinct thirteen forty seven. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, I with, do. With, with, with various. I tried to explain yes, that. Yes, with, with various <laughs> different possibilities, um, and um, the, the the suggestion on this one from. Um, for Mr. Banoff is please continue to look for a more convenient place and um, it would be helpful if there if anyone has a suggestion for a place that we haven't already mm -hmm. tried um, but uh, and, 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 and it would take a lot of effort for me personally to try and figure out all the different things that happened along the way although some of them are mentioned in, in, mm -hmm. in your letter but if there's a suggestion for somewhere else <laughs> or an alternative <coughs> way of dealing with the parking issue because it sounds like the park, the polling place itself is not the issue, but parking, parking is. And yeah. may, maybe there's something that can be done with Montgomery College to, to deal with the, the parking. Because um, I do think that um, a lot of time and effort and energy went into I, there, that, you know, I issue, issues, issues yeah. related to that precinct. <laughs> and I thought that was the selection everybody was happy with. Well, well, they were, yeah. I guess, until it came to election <laughs> day and they couldn't park. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it yeah. might be an issue, too, of trying to do something about the parking there. Right. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you again. Uh, the next item is uh, any additions or changes? Madam President, we will need an executive session. All right, and as I understand, it's to deal with uh, issues of on the budget, the 2016 budget, and uh, to uh, uh, minutes, approve minutes from the last executive. So we will do that. Uh, item four is approval of the board meeting minutes from November 17th. Are there, is there any discussion or additions, changes? If not, is there a motion? And move. Second. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the minutes from aye. November, aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, election director, report Margaret yes um, quickly I will review uh, personnel then we'll go into the budget issue uh, the payments for the election judges were mailed on Thursday December 11th 2014 the administrative staff has started releasing the temporary service temporary sat staff um, as the various election uh, tasks have been completed our IT temporary staff was given several weeks off while the State Board deliberated the closing down <coughs> procedures of the current voting units. The procedures for preventative maintenance as well as the decommissioning uh, were sent on Monday, December 8th, and the local boards were ordered to start with the audit and testing of any units that were removed from service because of a, a plate by a voter or voter flipping. The IT staff reviewed uh, the 2,832 units that were prepared for general election and there was only one that was taken out of service. The SBE <coughs> uh, and LD staff conducted testing on that unit and the unit passed the testing requirements for functionality of the unit. The IT staff is in Annapolis today and is being introduced to the new voting system of mm -hmm. their opportunity to kick the tires so I can't answer any questions uh, in your packet <coughs> should be a statement that uh, Janet prepared with regards to um, the uh, testing of that particular unit and the response testing um, the goal of, of this preventative maintenance 
is to, of course, do maintenance and then purge all election-related files by the early part of January 2015. The old touchscreen units will be sent to the SBE new warehouse and the local boards of elections will prepare to take delivery of the new voting system. Excuse me, Margaret, what are they going to do with the old ones just as a matter of uh, climate change kind of <laughs> I have no idea. questions? Thank you. The <laughs> training staff and recruiting <coughs> staff have been released except for several persons who were expected to complete a compilation of certain reports or to assist in managing calls related to the election judge payroll. The balance of the staff will be re released on this coming Friday. Uh, the warehouse staff uh, will be released upon completion of the dismantling of the election judge's fly bags and the shredding requirements that come with uh, any election. And then the voter registration and absentee temporary staff has been reduced. We have uh, released all of our call center and nursing home staff and most of the absentee staff have been released, phase, phasing them out beginning the November 22nd through Friday, December 12th. The balance of the temporary staff is supposed to be released by the end of January 2015. There are still, well, there's one major project at this point related to updating and maintenance of the voting list that requires processing. So that is the most, uh, that's kind of where we're at on personnel. Um, we're almost all the way down to permanent staff. Can I uh, ask some questions? before you go on to the other sections. Uh, the uh, payments that, uh, that went out to, uh, to the election judges, I understand that uh, prior to the check itself, which comes from, from the county, uh, a, uh, an email was sent to each of the election judges uh, telling them that, you know, the check's in the mail, so to speak. Uh, but it also contained uh, information about the article that was in, in the paper um, that uh, f from the, uh, the reporter who attended our last meeting when uh, Janet, I guess it was, was it J Janet who spoke mm -hmm. to, uh, yeah. Uh, the closing of, of a precinct and how long it takes. Uh, I, I, as I say, I, I heard about it uh, and uh, I have not seen the letter, I, I wonder, if, or the email, I wonder if we could see it because it sounded like um, uh, uh, something akin to uh, you know, this appeared in the paper, but we know that's not the not the case, and it takes a lot longer. And I'm sort of concerned that uh, since we all sat here and had a discussion about it and the length of time, and uh, uh, you know, that something like that would go out and and, and the board knew nothing about it. Um, well, number the one, I'll be happy to share the email. But I, but I, as I say, I, having not seen it myself, I want to make sure that I'm uh, attributing it correctly. Uh, so, if well, I'll be happy to share. Um, the issue was the the report appeared to say that a polling place could be closed in 20 minutes, and that was not what Janet Ross stated. She said it could take 20 to 25 minutes to close the voting units. And all That's not I, what I heard. no, no, she, she said, she, she, said, it, yeah. she said, and she did a number. She w I mean, because the question was, well, some polling places have X number of, you know, machines or whatnot. She was pretty, pretty emphatic. Well, I'll be happy to share the letter, and I can review the statement that Janet made. Can, can, yes, uh, can we get the letter now? Sure. Uh, It, it, there should be something in the minutes. <coughs> there? And there is. Huh? There is. <coughs> where, where, where is it? Uh, uh, so. It is Page in the seven. minutes. I remember seeing it. Yeah. Page seven. The election night tabulation. 
Where's the where's the where's the Miss Ross? Oh. Miss Ross. Yeah. Right here. Here. Oh, I see you. Yeah, but it doesn't. I, mean, I, I remember I asked the direct question: How long would it take you to to complete this process? Yeah, the minutes don't reflect her uh, her statement to that regard. But I, I think we all and and and, and the paper quoted Can correctly I ask a for twenty minutes. About the minutes more generally while we're waiting. Um, are the minutes going to have less detail now that we're doing? taping because I'm not aware that the board has asked for any change in how the minutes are prepared. Um, the answer to that is that um, there's there will still be detail in the minutes but there will there might not be as many direct quotes um, certainly not going to have no intention of going to 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 just summary minutes but at one point the board had uh, instructed us that um, and I think this came to us I'm, I'm trying to remember because it's been it's been a while but at one point we had received instruction that um, we needed to make sure that we had detail in anything that was resulting in a motion um, but that if it was just reports and that type of thing, that as long as we had the significant portions of the discussion in there, um, we did not have to go, this person said this, this person said this, this person said this. Okay. So, um, I, don't well, remember, I, I, don't, I don't remember that conversation. I don't know if it was at the board table. Uh, Here's it, it, there yeah. was a discussion, uh, David, that, that I recall um, at the time that um, uh, we moved to to have the recording, uh, but I think we we all were in agreement that uh, we didn't expect a dramatic change in in what the minutes would would look like. And actually, I don't think in our minutes prior to recording did we necessarily have every uh, issue that was debated and he said, she said, you know, kind of thing going back and forth. Um, but I, I certainly, I, I think we all, you know, this board just felt very strongly that we liked the deep, more detailed minutes. Uh, certainly the, uh, the citizenry of the county has appreciated the greater detail. And, and we don't have any intention of going back backwards. I mean, I, I'm not really aware of any significant change to these. Um. Okay. Well, what I'm concerned about is, is that if this statement was, first of all, this is a draft, so. Uh, this, but this is, this, but it even, this it is. Even has, even has handwriting in it. Right. Well, I, I was, I got this to you so it's quick. I did not, I, I did not get a copy of the email, but this is the intent, this was the last. But okay. my purpose was is that after the article appeared in the Washington Post, the election judges uh, wrote us and were upset that they were depicted as not being capable of performing their tasks uh, in on a timely basis. So, um, so what we <coughs> what I did was try to because obviously I need election judges to conduct elections. And uh, we believe that the description that you could close a polling place in 20 minutes is definitely inaccurate. And that um, what we needed to do was to um, uh, Well, we have the article here. Better, well, what, not only that, we, 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 we all sat through it. And if it was inaccurate, you know, we all heard it. I think we all heard it the same way. It was, if it was inaccurate, someone could have said something at the time when Janet was still sitting at the table. I asked her point blank, how long would it take you to close the polls? And um, I'm pretty sure if you go back to listen to the tape, um, as now any member of the public can, um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what, that's what you'll find. But if you're going to correct the record on what your staff is saying to every election judge we have, correct I put in quotes, I would think you'd want to talk to the board because that statement was made to the board. Um, and 
Um, I'm kind of surprised at the idea that you corrected for the judges and not corrected for the board. Um, I'm the one who asked the question, but I think everyone at this table was curious to hear the answer. Um, and um, if Marianne hadn't heard about this and brought it up today, um, there's no indication that we would have been told about this at all. I was trying to be proactive to make sure that our elected election judges come back in 2016. Well, there's no question. We all want the election judges to come back. We want to get many more of them. But um, if a polling place should be closed faster than they're closing it, that's not a problem for the election judges. That's a problem for the training we're providing them and the instructions we're providing them. And, um, and I'm kind of surprised that our um, answer to this is to say we know it takes longer when your chief of IT, our chief of IT, acting chief of IT, said very directly that she can close down a polling location in 20 minutes. Uh, um, I, I, I can only, um, I will go and review again what the exact, exactly what was said, but um, when I talked to Janet, Janet made it very clear to me that what she was stating was that what it would take, the question related to motoring election results and how long would it take to close down the voting units so that those results could be modem to the Board of Elections so that results could come to the board? I don't disagree quickly. with that. That is called the closure. The whole gist of the debate was the fact that we were so late getting the results. And what she spoke to was you can get those in 20 minutes you know, by going in and, uh, and getting the information from the voting units and, and modem them in. But, but that's not she, it wasn't talking about picking up every scrap of paper and piece of tape in, in the, uh, in the uh, precinct that I, I, at least that wasn't my understanding, I don't but know. But the election judges viewed the statement as closing the entire polling place, which includes the poll book, taking down the signs, and all of those other elements. Margaret, you have all of our email addresses and you communicate with us on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. You have our phone numbers, you have our cell phone numbers. Is there some reason why changing that statement that was made to us in a public meeting that we now make available to everyone um, didn't lead to your letting us know about this? Uh, no, because I, I was thinking that the judge, the payroll checks were going out, we were notifying them because we were getting phone calls, and to me this was the vehicle in which to just let them know that we were aware of the issue and that we would try to mitigate that I wanted to clarify what uh, Janet Ross was quoted as saying in the paper, and we were trying to mitigate uh, for the future so that this issue would not be an issue in 2016. When were you going to tell us? To tell you the truth, I was, I probably, I didn't think about telling you. Because to me, I'm sorry, I did not realize that um, this was such a big issue. You didn't realize that the tabulation of votes was such a big issue? No, I didn't realize that trying to reach out to the election judges to ensure that they have a positive feeding, feeling about serving would would create this issue. No, I do apologize. Everybody at this table wants to reach out to the judges and have them have a positive feeling. Um, and certainly, uh, but everybody at this table also wants to know how to make the process of reporting returns um, more efficient and at least make it to the point where we are even with the other big counties and not the last one, you know, in, in entirely. And I personally just don't believe the idea that it would never occur to you to let us know about correcting a statement that was in a Washington Post article um, that we all heard. I mean, I asked the question, um, and it was in the context of how long does it take to get the results in? and. Um, well, and we really yeah. went even even further discussing the size of precincts, you know, mm -hmm. saying, well, maybe that's a small precinct or something, but what happens if you have yeah, 17 yeah. machines? I well, mean, it, no, went, no. it went on for a bit. We, she we, was very, 
you know, very definite in, in, in her thinking on it. And certainly it, it is not accurate to say that it was reported inaccurately. I, that, I, let me add one thing to that. I think we also lost a big opportunity here. And the opportunity is, the way that I would have made sure that the judges had a positive feeling about this is I would have asked them for their suggestions as to how to make the process more efficient <coughs> and what they think they needed in order to uh, get the, um, the returns in faster. Because I'm sure that in addition to not agreeing with the statement that it can be done in 20 minutes, I don't know whether Janet can actually do it in 20 minutes or not. I know that that's what she said and we all, we all heard her say it. Um, but um, every person you sent this email to is a person who probably has an opinion on the subject, especially if they were, were voting, you know, if they were working in the polls after the polls closed at 8 o'clock. They all have an, a, an opinion on it. I personally would like to hear what they have to say. Um, and the idea that we're taking back a statement that was made in a public meeting and that you're taking it back without consulting with all of us who are all very keenly interested in both making it more efficient and making sure that our judges understand how much we appreciate their service. And I think we missed a big opportunity here to, to, uh, to, to get their uh, to get their input as to how to make this better. Because I, I personally, this is one of our biggest issues, is how to um, make the results um, reported more efficiently um, and, um, and, and see what kind of help our judges think they need. And, and if they, you know, if we need more judges, obviously, you know, as, you, as you've told us before, we have to figure out, you know, additional ways to recruit. We probably have to have more closing judges, although I have to look at the, 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 the data that you provided me here. Um, but I mean, this is clearly something that we're interested in. And um, I'm just- well, Not only you know, us, but- yeah. uh, uh, Our elected citizen, officials. Elected <laughs> officials. Yes. And, and I mean, I think all of us here have been hearing from various people. It's the first question an elected official and, yeah. asked me is, so why, why did it take you, you so long? Why were we the last? Not just elected officials, any person who hears that I work on, you know, that I'm on the Board of Elections, the first question is, what happened to these returns? Yeah, yeah. they're always yeah. late. Well, uh, I, I was surprised to, to hear about this, and I just heard about it over, over the weekend. And, um, you know, that, that's the other thing. It's, it's not good to be a, a member of the board and said, oh, yes, we, we got, you know, an email from the uh, election director and blah, 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 and I'm standing there like, okay. um, or, or, you know, if it happened to any of us. But certainly, uh, you know, in the future, I mean, uh, in our dealings in three and a half years, uh, we all get back to you uh, quickly uh, on items. Uh, uh, if something comes up and, and you haven't heard from me, your next thing is you call me. So, you know, something like this that's going to go out in such a universal way uh, really does need to be brought to the board first. Okay. I Especially will. when it's it's changing, you know, of what we all heard. So that that's my issue on that. Uh, I had a question on some, some other part here. Um, oh, the one unit of the, uh, the vote flipping, um, I was, and I know I'll get into it uh, later, the state board, uh, apparently they had quite, quite a few units that had to be taken out of, of service. Uh, we only had one, is that it, where although we had reports of, of people and complaints that came in, but those were resolved on, on site uh, and the machines were, were allowed to stay in service? It was determined in all of the instances it was human error. And there was no problem with the machine. So there was one though where the machine was a, an issue. There was one machine that was identified by the election judges in that precinct that they took out of service because of uh, alleged vote flipping. And so they ran the test on it, and that was, uh, that was it. Were mach other, well, machines taken out? Yeah. other machines taken out of service for other reasons? Yes. Okay. That's what I understood. Uh, th that's what the only question I have. What kind of? What other reasons were they taken out? Uh, battery issues, uh, the electrical plug uh, didn't work right. Um, that, those were the big ones. Screen freezes. Screen freezes? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
A lot of the screen clearances, though, you can leave boot up. Uh, okay. Uh, do you have further things in your report? Uh, well, the significant meeting, Allison attended uh, the National Con Conference of National Council of State Legislators as a guest, and she covered uh, the election-related issues. She'll provide a summary. Sure. Um, I do just want to add to the last discussion that one machine that we tested, it passed the calibration test as well. There was no calibration issue actually identified on the machine that the election judges had taken out of service on election day. I just wanted that to be in the record. Um, Margaret asked me to speak to, I, I did have an opportunity last week to sit in at a, a few sessions of the National Conference of State Legislatures. Linda Lamone and Mary Wagner from the State Board of Elections were also there, and Linda Lamone spoke to the group on behalf of the National Association of State Election Directors. Um, the main reason, and that was sort of a, a general conversation as part of a grant that that organization has received to foster some discussions. Um, I'm sorry, Le I'm sorry, I Linda Lamone spoke to the group yes. I talked about a grant that they'd gotten? No, um, the National Conference of State Legislatures has a grant where they are convening some different people from different groups to talk about issues, priorities, election technology. Um, and, and that was what Linda spoke on behalf of the National Association of State Election Directors about. Um, she largely identified, um, I didn't have notes here on that session because that wasn't the part I was going to talk to you all about, but um, she spoke first and foremost to voting technology issues that states are grappling with across the country. Um, she did speak to voter registration issues. Um, uh, Eric, particularly, sort of talking about the big issues from an elections perspective for a state legislator audience across the country. Um, the main reason I went um, was because they were having a session discussing motor voter, and I wanted to get the pulse of what's hap happening nationally with the uh, motor vehicle administrations across the country. Um, and quite honestly, I have to say that my main takeaway from the meeting was that despite the concerns that we have here and that we are working through <coughs> in the state of Maryland, really Maryland is evidently pretty far ahead of the game nationally in terms of the degree of the integration that we do have between the motor vehicle systems and our voter rolls. Um, in most states it is not possible to do what we do at the Maryland Motor Vehicle Administration and look up your current voter registration information. That Part of the process does not exist in most states. It's purely a one-way feed of the data from the Motor Vehicle Administration to the Voter Registration Department. Um, and so we are in the minority of states and even having that process available, which, you know, of course, now we need to work through our issues on how that data is managed. Um, there are quite a few states where the voter registration update happens with fewer than one in 10 motor vehicle transactions. So this is, a, this is a big issue across the country. Uh, the word failure was being used to describe the motor voter law at this meeting, really talking about the extent of the problems that states are having around the country. Do um, they go into detail? I mean, what I'm wondering is um, if someone comes in to, to, to deal with, uh, you know, a, a driver's issue, license or whatever and uh, if they're asked if they want to do anything with their voter registration and they say no is that re would that be recorded and then nothing further takes place there would that be recorded in this kind of finding as not having any interaction uh, and that they only count the things where they're actually registering someone that was Good exactly question. one of the issues that was being discussed, the, the lack of a real data trail in many cases in many states on, on the discussion occurring um, was, a, was a talking point in the presentations at the meeting. The, um, <coughs> one of the biggest charts that was being put up on the screen was showing the spike in transactions that occur during the month, the months prior to an election at the Motor Vehicle Administration. 
and simply that trail of when the transactions occur was being put up as evidence that clearly the conversation that is happening here it must be one of do you want to register to vote or, or something where the conversation tends to be taking place in a way that is voter led where the voter is saying that they're going to go ahead and transfer this information right prior to an election as opposed to this being a routine update that is happening as people change their addresses in mm -hmm. the Motor Vehicle Administration. Um, really <coughs> sort of piecing apart what data exists, what data doesn't exist, in what states there's sufficient data to really be able to analyze the questions. That's the state of the national discussion about motor voter. Um, the one, the, the math that there's so few states where you have the data, number one was a big talking point, the, the uh, low percentage of motor vehicle transactions that are prompting a transfer of data to a voter registration department you know, is another. Um, I think the one area where I think we're really sort of in the thick of the reform case that was being made at this meeting was that at least under the interpretations of the motor voter law that the presenters were discussing, they were making the statement that really sending a paper form in the mail is never okay. And my, uh, my recollection of our discussions with the Maryland <coughs> MCA is that they were, they were talking that they were really kind of in a process of expanding that and that right now you have transactions that you take place where it all happens through the electronic data interchange and then you have some transactions where they send the paper form in the mail. And the reform case that was being made nationally here was that really that, that paper form <coughs> ought never be sent, that it really always needs to be this electronic data transfer. It was at least sort of the, the argument being presented by the speakers at the conference. Um, so I, you know, my takeaway was really that nationally the discussion wasn't so much about the, the specifics of the quality of the data that we're talking about here, but about the data really getting there in the first place. Um, our situation really wasn't addressed at this conference at all, although um, I did have offline conversations with the speakers, as I believe I had reported to the board at our last meeting, um, that some of these folks really felt like we were, you know, we were addressing real issues here, and that there are models of other states out there where they've grappled with the same issues that we're dealing with, um, and that really just having the voters' signature be put into the record after they see, review, affirm their information is a, you know, would be a really big improvement for us. Um, but it did sort of make me question my assumptions about where we are in this overall discussion with the motor vehicle agencies nationwide, where Maryland is really put on the list as one of the lead states, although we clearly still have issues to work through. Um, and, uh, and you know we've clearly come a long way too in some of the implementations that we have had. But we do have issues, and so that's where I think some of the uh, you know the folks at the Pew Center on the States that had approached us, you know, I think they are very interested in working with us and seeing how because we're already so far ahead of the game nationally, and that data does exist, and there are in fact improvements that can be identified and made, that we can then be in a position to be more of a model state in working through the issues that we have and really be clearly that much more ahead of some of the states where they see a larger set of issues that need to be addressed. Um, so I thought that was a, a discussion I wanted to bring to the attention of the board. Um, and then I also, we can discuss that further to any extent that you want, but I also wanted to just flag to you that I also attended on Friday a quarterly meeting of the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments. The um, election officials from the states here in the D.C. area get together quarterly. And the main thing, it was really kind of an election debriefing, but the main thing that we all talked about was um, the voting system changes that we're all going through, and Virginia in particular having just done, uh, in some of their jurisdictions having just switched voting equipment. And um, we heard from Fairfax County about their implementation of the same voting equipment that Maryland is now on track to purchase statewide. Now, a few of us from the staff did go down to Fairfax County and observe logic and accuracy testing on the voting equipment that we are going to be implementing. We are currently working with some of the officials down there to bring a staff group down. There will be a special election for a General Assembly seat there in um, some precincts in Fairfax and Loudoun counties the first Tuesday in January. So we're going to bring some staff down there to see it in a live voting environment. Um, have they, they've already started using it? Did they use it in November? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
I would say to characterize, and Margaret may want to add, I think that they are happy with the um, with the voting system that they have purchased. Um, of course, they started making the transition to paper in a much more gradual way than we're doing it, and so you know they. What do you mean? How do you do that? This. In Virginia, the law was such that counties, because the counties may may choose their own voting systems in Virginia, the counties were prohibited from purchasing right, new DRE machines. So as their inventory has dwindled, they were in a position of needing to use paper as an alternative and sort of slowly weaning voters off of the touchscreen machines and having more use of paper. Okay. Now they're in a position where there tends to be a single touchscreen sitting in a polling place and most voters are using paper, but that has been a somewhat slower process than, than what we have here. DC um, does that as well, don't they? Didn't they sort of have both and Yeah, they've had transition? the choice of paper or plastic, as they termed it, for, for a longer time than mm -hmm. they've had in, in these northern Virginia counties, too. Uh, and we are planning to go down and take some staff down and see the District, District of Columbia's um, warehouse operation as well, they, because they are a heavily paper jurisdiction, and some of our staff has not had the opportunity to, to see how that's handled in a live environment. They have a special election coming up this spring themselves, so um, we're going to take some staff down to, to see how that goes. Um, the last thing I had on my list Excuse to me, could you yeah. get in touch with some of us? Some of us might want to go down and look at the, the voting <coughs> uh, over there and see what the new machines are going to be like here in Maryland. So I'd like if Mrs. Chairman, Ms. Chairman, if that operate, Madam, if that would be all right with you, if if we could accompany some of the staff down. Uh, if it, yeah, if they, if if they can set it up with the uh, with There's, the there will be several elections. They have that Virginia is fortunate; they get to practice a lot. So uh, they've got some special elections mm -hmm. in Fairfax. Yeah. Thank so you. Uh, um, no, I, th I think it would bad. be helpful. There's April. There's some elections in April and May. I think there's going to be lots, and my experience over the last couple of months has showed there's going to be lots and lots of conversation about this. And I think the more we know about the new machines, the better off we on the board particularly are going to be. Great. We'll just send an email around. Thank you. Um, and then I uh, also had on my list to flag, I think Margaret mentioned, that several of the staff have been appointed to or in the process of being appointed to various uh, groups that the state has set up? Yeah, that's you haven't right. gotten to that yet? Okay, that. I'll wait on that though. Okay, okay. Uh, that's <laughs> the end of four significant meetings. Do you want to go to budget? Um, budget next, okay. No. Um. Wait, before, before we go to, to budget, Margaret had a portion of her report that uh, talked about um, precinct adjustments and polling places yeah. for 2016. That will be later. That will be later. Yeah, uh, her report goes back and forth because oh, of the, oh, oh. Uh, if you follow goes the agenda. Goes back and forth with the agenda. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so budget is next. <coughs> <coughs> you were sent in advance a copy of the FY15 operating budget uh, spreadsheet um, <coughs> showing information through November 30th as of December 1st, um, and that shows, um, shows where we're standing. A significant amount of overtime was spent in November. Um, hopefully that's not a terrible surprise to anybody. Um, we have not received any of the state bills relating to November, um, and so uh, we're certainly going to see additional spending as we go forward. Um, our temporary uh, costs will start slowing down a little bit as temporaries are let go, as Margaret uh, indicated earlier in the meeting. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have on this spreadsheet. Uh, anything um, striking you as untoward? Not at this point, no. Um, we'll I mean, I see the overtime, uh, but it still is under our, our, yeah. our 
our number there, and <coughs> I wouldn't think, um, given the, the rest of the fiscal year, there we should not have much more overtime at all. Mm -hmm. um, although I, you know, I, I can't say that, you know, and stand on it because we're not sure, of course, when the new voting system is going to come in and what we're going to need to do and what time frames the state will assign. So I don't want to sit here and say there's not going to be any more overtime this year. Um, sure. So if there are not any questions on that, then the other thing that was sent to this to the board in advance um, at your request was a spreadsheet that um, that shows surpluses from fiscal years 11, 12, 13, and 14. It shows whether there was a surplus or a deficit in each line item. I sent a revised spreadsheet out to you all uh, towards the end of last week that had a new column added to it that just has a has that line highlighted in yellow. There's no verbiage, there's no nothing. Uh, it just shows you the ones that have uh, have been in a surplus status more than a deficit status. So those were the ones that I thought might might be the focus of, of any conversation. I also sent a copy of uh, some bullet points regarding each of those specific uh, line items. And I'm not sure to what extent how you want this this conversation to go if the information provided was sufficient or if you want to discuss it in more detail um. uh, well I, I I found it very helpful mm -hmm. and uh, appreciate the uh, I, I do appreciate the time that it takes to go through this and not only point out the areas but then give us a little uh, a little blurb on it I really think this is uh, something that um, we'll be applying in our uh, look to the future budget, uh, uh, probably Absolutely. more so than anything we're dealing with with the current budget. And I also utilized it um, in looking at the FY16, that, and we'll talk about that later. Right. Yes. Thank you. That's still not. Yeah, thank you very much. I, uh, as I say, I appreciate the, the work, and, but I think it'll be helpful to us in that discussion. Okay. Does anybody else have any? Okay. Okay, going on to uh, voter registration. Um, voter registration has been very busy processing. Uh, the jury commission, uh, they processed uh, 1,006 documents of returned mail, uh, 8,950 documents of the electronic voter registration from uh, Maryland uh, MVA. Uh, approximately 500 paper documents, uh, approximately 2,350 documents from the precinct update forms that came to us from Election Day. There were uh, approximately 386 uh, death notices that were backlogged. And we also uh, worked with the state. We pulled a list of those individuals that were plus 99 years old to uh, review and do a comparison to the Department of Health's uh, death notices to see if there were some people that somehow had been missed <coughs> in the process. Um, and there were about 800 plus names that the staff uh, investigated to <coughs> up to determine if, you know, in the process of going back and forth, they were just missed. And so, um, and that Eight, was 800 were found that actually had deceased, is that? No, there were 800 names of individuals that were 99 plus years old. Wow. And so what the staff did was go into the Department of Mental Health record and do a, do a, a death search to see if these individuals had just been missed over a period of time. So that was also done. And 386 uh, had been missed? No, 386 had passed since October 14th to November 28th. And their voting record was pulled? Their voting record was canceled. Okay. Okay. And then uh, the 6,553 <coughs> documents of the provisionals and then uh, those provisionals 
Um, there were 535 that were not registered that we notified that they were not registered. We were unable to count their provisional ballot. And now the big project is the national change of address. We have what we believe is 66,000 uh, plus documents that we need to review. And we have uh, well over 8,000 pieces of mail that were returned. This can include sample ballots as well as voter notification um, application, voter notification forms. Additionally, the SBE had notified the local boards that the transition of inactive to canceled voters will occur this weekend. When you um, say review the 66,000, can you just tell us what, what does that entail? Well, these are individuals that um, we have some sort of notification from the United States Postal Service mm -hmm. that these, they may have changed their address. So what has to occur is we go through a confirmation mailing process. But actually what we're going to do is we're going to run that list of names against all of the, okay, so after Saturday or Sunday whenever the state does their uh, purge or right. cancellation, then mm -hmm. what we will do is we'll pull that list and, and, see, and then see how many of these 66,000 mm -hmm. we captured. And then the ne those that have remained, we will begin what is called the confirmation mailing process in which we will mail to the last known address mm -hmm. a confirmation card. If it comes back, then, <coughs> and, or it's returned by the U.S. Postal Service, they then become inactive. And, but they are not canceled. Right. They just become inactive. They just become inactive, and if we have an address, then we are have the opportunity to mail it to that new address. If it's a forwarding order expired, then there's not much we can do because we have no known address, and so that's the project that the staff will be working on through January. We're hoping that when we do this data match, that this will clean up the list. And then the other big project that's also coming down uh, that we've been notified is ERIC. Uh, that will be coming in January. And that's always a comprehensive list. Mm -hmm. But uh, my understanding is there are only eight states on ERIC? I'm not sure. I think, that, I think that's what I was said. It's 11, but I'm not sure that. It's not many. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, and when you talked about that, is, um, I mean, I really wasn't going to make it part of my state report, but they spoke at the state meeting about Eric and the new law that passed in the last session. With uh, the Social Security death match. And said that they, yes, mm -hmm. so that the uh, local boards are now going to be going through and removing mm -hmm. uh, the people who Social Security shows as having been deceased after one mailing notification. Right. So that's gonna, going to, I guess, hopefully reduce those numbers that we have. Mm -hmm. The other issue, and I continue to, to hear it, and I don't know, you know what can be done or what folks might suggest we, could be done. Uh, the notices that come into high households where people in the household, primarily children, are no longer living. They don't send it back to us. They, yes. they don't think that th that's the thing to do, you know? They just toss it and say, oh yeah, you know. But then when they see somebody like me, they say, you know, when is this mailing gonna stop for little Johnny who hasn't lived here in five years? And I said, well, have you sent it back, wrote on it, you know, not at this address, return? Well, no, who does that? <laughs> Uh, and and thinking about it, uh, it's it's true. I mean, I, I sort of understand. I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, this has been an issue for a long time um, in terms of how do we best notify parents or ex-spouses or whatever. Uh, how do you get this name off of the off of that address? Um, it does say that you can return it, which there's a certain level of success. But I think that's one of the reasons we're moving to ERIC. 
<coughs> and to try to get more and more states involved in that process because what that does is it allows us to compare our list to this national list so that if Johnny Jr. moves to <coughs> Ohio or, a, or Virginia or Delaware or North Carolina, we have a name match, right. a date of birth match, and we can begin the process of saying to that particular individual, are you, know, are you the same person and where are you living? And I think it's a process that's just going to have to evolve. Uh, and we need to have more states participating mm -hmm. so that we can clean up these lists. But right now, that's only with 10 other states. Right. But so if I luck, they're, they're one of the states. But if they're not, then you're still in the same. Right. For Kermit, you still. If, if I can elaborate just a little bit, and, and that was partly just echoing Margaret's point, that was actually one of the things that Linda Lamone stressed in her comments at the NCSL meeting that I attended last week. She spoke to Eric, she spoke to the Kansas cross-check process, um, and she discussed in general terms all of this being good things for states to be trading information. Um, but she really stressed that the attribute of Eric and the reason that Maryland is a part of Eric and not part of the Kansas cross-check process is because what Eric is is a is a smart match. It's, it's data analysis. They have staff that is doing the work of taking all of this data and sorting through what's more recent, what's more up to date. Where the the cross check process is is literally just you know, here's all the data, make make of it what you will, um, and so you get a whole lot more data than you have you know the ability to really sort through and know what that data reflects underneath it all. Um, I, I did want to <coughs> comment that the, the 66,000 number that you have, that's, that's about typical. That's, I mean, the Postal Service tells us that about 10% of our rolls are going to move every year. It's going to be higher here. We're a little bit more of a mobile area. Um, and so every time we do the bounce for the sample ballot, every time we do one of these large mailings, we pay to run that data past the Postal <coughs> Service and to basically do it before the mail bounces to get that kind of pre-bounce to see who it is that the Postal Service already knows they're going to return this mail to us. And that's what that is, is the data from when we did the bounce against the, the sample ballot mailing. Is all of this based on the period of October 14th to November 20th, or um, is it no, more than that? No, it would be more than that. Um, so what is I the period? I believe we send the list over in September. <coughs> Yeah, we sent yeah. the list over in September. So we haven't begun going through that yet because it is largely, well, well we can't, first of all, in between. We can't go moving people's information around right before well, the election. Well, it makes no sense either as the state hasn't um, done it yet. Right. right. So, and then we have to go through all of these things on the back end. What Eric is envisioned to accomplish, what we're working toward. So far, we don't have the Social Security data in there. We don't have the motor vehicle. We don't, I'm sorry, with motor vehicle. We don't have the... Um, um, Postal Service data in there, that's what they're working toward. So that we can get Postal Service data in a regular ERIC data uh, <coughs> volume that we're getting, then we won't have uh, 66,000 records at a time to go through and make sense of and how that does or doesn't match up to other transactions we've been getting. Uh, I've got a couple, so couple, of, to get smarter about couple of questions and a comment about ERIC. Number one, I can see the national database that you're being very objectionable to lots of people. Um, moving toward the national identification card, the whole kind of concept coming from it. So it's probably never going to have 50 states. What is the, um, which sort of negates a lot of the, the need for it, what's the cost of it? What's it, does it, do you pay per voter? Do you pay per, per, per voter? Uh, that's uh, oh, yeah. kicked off. Uh, we, how there do you is pay? a fee, and we would need to get that from the state board. Because I know there's a fee to join. I remember them talking about that. Um, one assumes the state board of elections picks up that fee, and is then then is there a fee per person? That's it, what I want to know. It, there is a fee. I know that it's going down as more the carrying cost of it per state are going down as more states join it, but I don't know what it is offhand. In mm. in the interim, we talked about it before, I think we can still, we, we should still work on 
better highlighting on those sample ballots that this is uh, <coughs> just, it says to return it, but this is also serves as taking you off the voter rolls. So please return it. I mean, this, we, we need to put stronger language, I think, on, on the ballot in regards to how important it is for you to return, turn it if, you're per, if the person's no longer living there. And can we add that to our frequent asked questions on our website? Sure. That's a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And how many, I wanted to know, how many people are going to be working on this, on these 66,000 documents? Um, mm -hmm. nine, wow. Got four ten now in VR. About 14 people altogether. And does that include the 8,000 as well? Right. So really it's like 74,000. Well, we don't, I oh, mean, we don't know we, until the we state don't know does until it. we do this okay. bounce, another data bounce. Mm -hmm. And the 8,000, what's the difference with the 8,000? Can you just give me a those quick are, example? Those are the people that the sample, they did read the sample ballot admonishment. Uh, Please send us back. Yeah. So they and it was Fair sent back. Okay. So, and we still, are, I mean, we're still going through those. That number could go up a little, but it's not going to go up significantly. Okay. Thank you. And the task that we're holding on to some temporary personnel to help us get through. That was my. I plan. would think that would be wise. <laughs> okay. Um. Is that it for that's voter registration? Uh, that's it for voter registration. Uh, State Board, did you want to talk about your... I will. Um, I uh, had placed in everybody's packet uh, the talking points uh, that Allison um, and I worked on uh, that were given to each of the, uh, the State Board members. Uh, Jackie uh, Phillips uh, accompanied me uh, having been the uh, author, if you will, of uh, <laughs> the idea of the audit and um, and was, I think, the first or certainly one of the first to uh, come to us with uh, issues of people that uh, had been finding uh, situations where their registration was changing from what they had intended. Um, and uh, but I didn't uh, I didn't stand and uh, read verbatim uh, from from the talking points I I, I spoke extemporaneously uh, from it as, as notes, but basically they also had a copy of uh, the letter uh, that uh, we had sent forward to the uh, committee uh, requesting the audit, and so uh, my whole presentation to them was really one of. Um, uh, courtesy uh, to you know just tell them briefly why we were doing this and, and uh, a quick overview of the kinds of issues we had found out. Um, the chair of, of, of the board, uh, Bobby Mack, um, uh, made a point of, of coming to us at the beginning of the meeting and uh, saying how uh, pleased she was that we had taken initiative on such an important issue. Uh, very interestingly, um, MVA was represented at the, at the meeting. Uh, they weren't on the uh, agenda to make the presentation, but uh, they uh, had a representative there. And as the discussion ensued from uh, following my presentation, the uh, first question was, um, did you copy MVA uh, with your letter? And um, I explained how I, I personally didn't send out the letter, and I knew there were, you know, a lot of uh, 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 people copied on it. Uh, however, the fact of the matter is that MVA was not copied uh, officially on, on the letter. Our mistake. And, um, you know, but um, the, uh, the state had given the uh, gentleman there from MVA a copy <coughs> that, that afternoon. Um, so, um, the chair of the, uh, the state board then suggested that um, the state uh, director of, of registration um, should 
perhaps uh, outreach to all the other county boards and find out if uh, there was this issue, the kinds of things we were finding, if they were finding it in other areas, and um, that they could then in turn work with counties and with MBA to, to resolve these things. Um, and I explained is how we certainly had been working with uh, MVA um, and we had been working with the state and we called these issues to their attention as we first encountered them and uh, that we had had joint meetings over there, etc. But that we felt we needed to take the extra step uh, to, to really get the kind of attention to, you know, uh, remedy the situation. Um, and um, the uh, gentleman from MVA then spoke and allowed us how, uh, starting in January, a number of the issues we had raised are going to be taken care of. Oh. Uh, when, I, when I asked if, uh, if this had been, had anybody been notified about this, uh, was, was it made public or had, the, had we, our board, been told or anything? He said, no, notice hadn't gone out yet. Uh, he mentioned several areas on uh, screens, and please jump in because uh, uh, I may forget. The most significant one was picking up on the issue that people are so concerned with non-citizens that could be registering to vote is that on that particular screen at the end, they are now going to have a checkbox uh, where the person uh, taking the, uh, the oath, if you will, <coughs> will also state in that that they are a citizen of the United States. Well, we've been telling them. And so exactly, mm -hmm. and, then, and then it will be signed uh, following that. So it's, it's strengthening the oath, it's making them actually check that. Are they requiring a separate signature? They say they are requiring a separate signature. Um, but, um, you know, the, it, the detail of all the things that we pointed out, and, and, and I, I said, you know, that, that, that's all wonderful, and, um, but, you know, I still think an independent view and looking at this and really assessing the whole situation the interaction between the uh, the three groups, if you will, county, s state, board, and, and MBA, um, really needs to you know be looked at to to see whatever. Um, again, there seemed to be this resistance that this could be taken care of in house, if you will, and uh, at that point, uh, board member uh, P. J. Hogan uh, spoke. And, and said uh, he, in fact, used to be on the committee uh, of the legislature dealing uh, with audits, mm -hmm. and uh, that this is not a bad thing. He strongly, strongly was for it. And he said it's to be looked as a positive thing to get ideas. And he uh, uh, was very strongly in, in favor of us doing that. He was very definitely. And he pointed out that, you know, audits are a very routine uh, effect. I mean, every government agency is routinely audited. <coughs> he asked them when their next audit was scheduled, and it's scheduled in August of this year, of uh, 2015. <coughs> and so his suggestion was that we could work with the, you know, audit folks uh, and have them uh, take into consideration in putting together the audit for MVA these issues so that it could be directly spoken to in their formal audit. The, the August audit is for MVA, not for the state board. That's correct. It's for MVA. Okay. It's for MVA. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I thought that was a rather positive outcome. Uh, nobody sent us off to do anything particularly. Um, <coughs> but my, my feeling was that I would like to, uh, at this point, reach back out uh, to the chairs of the committee just as, a, as an update in an informal way. I'm, I'm thinking of perhaps an email um, to, the, uh, to the two chairs uh, with uh, 
any necessary cop out. But I, I, I'd like it to not be quite so formal. Just to say, you know, uh, we have not heard back from them. So number one, hoping that they received our formal uh, letter of request. And uh, just as a brief update, that um, in speaking to the State Board on the issue, uh, that we learned that uh, MVA is in fact scheduled for routine audit in August, and there was a suggestion that this could become a component uh, of that audit. Um, I wanted to, you know, reach out to the board and, and see what your thoughts are on our next steps. Have they met since we sent them a letter? Has who met? The committee. Not that I'm aware. No, of course, you know, they're, in, they're, they're not in session. So. And is their membership about to change? Yes. 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 So, I believe so. So. I believe that uh, they reconvene in early January. Right. So, so, so it would be something that I would send out this email this week to as another heads up to these folks who have our original thing so that maybe something can be done before folks start moving around. Do we know how long the audit lasts? Um, because my only concern is whether August is soon enough depending on how long it takes for it to be completed and then for any follow-up, because I think we want to make sure that um, whatever the audit finds, you know, whatever whatever um, fixes are suggested or, you know, uh, that can be implemented uh, as soon as possible. One of the things that we had thought about asking to be part of the audit is it gives us time now to work with the audit committee to make sure we get in at what we want if, in fact, they agree to do this. It seems to me, and I agree with your, your comment, that we could ask them for an early addressing of these particular subjects. The over long-term things they're dealing with might be fine to do longer, but on this section of the audit, could we have a, a, a faster turnaround time? On it? I think that could be easily part of the negotiations. Mm -hmm. due, to the, due to the timing mm -hmm. of the upcoming elections, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Given the time of the year and the change of the board, uh, I don't know how many people are going to be focusing on um, the committee. I'm saying if the committee's changing, we, we're into two, how many, three weeks, less than three weeks uh, before January. I, I, I don't know if we should do a letter now or have one there at the beginning. The chairs of probably won't change. I would be, uh, I would, that would surprise me. Is the there, is there rumor to that effect? Do we, oftentimes you know ahead of time what, what those changes are. I, I haven't heard anything. Because the delegate, the delegation numbers haven't changed, I mean, enough to make committee changes, committee chair changes. But there's some, there's been quite, a few committees that they have changed their chairs, so I would not be surprised. If there were. Mm -hmm. uh, there but were. if I'm hearing you, uh, uh, Denise, you're suggesting that maybe we wait till January. Let's see the makeup of the committee. Um, and um, since we are only <coughs> talking about a, another, yeah, probably another we four weeks till, till they'll be there. They'll know those chairs right in the beginning mm -hmm. of the session, right? Mm -hmm. And then it could be timely to say, hey, as a quick reminder That's a here, good idea. now that you're in session, does that yeah. make sense? That's, that that makes sense. I would call now and ask if the chair's going to change. Yeah. You're not going to know. They'll know. Okay. They know now. Somebody will know. Be sure. But I'd like that task of waiting until you know who to address it to. For sure. They mention anything about paper trail that they're going to change any of that? Like you get a receipt with everything you have done once you're you know done with your uh, registration or anything that you could actually walk away with something that says you have registered to vote and you'd register a Democrat and you have changed your address. And this is is there something that you can? Because that's no, one of the uh, issues uh, is that I've known. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, just a, a summary, summary page, page where you can just walk away with. And then you can then say, okay, there's discrepancies with what I did. and That's what a really good idea. Yeah, I agree. Well, it's, it's one of the things the board proposed in the last I session. thought we did, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we proposed. So a summary page, and the person has to then 
sign affirming that they have read the summary page and the information contained therein is accurate. And then they get a paper trail. Right. Also, Did like they, you get a receipt if they paid money. Like when you go to anything these days, right? When you go to the bank, you get a statement, you get a receipt. When you go mm -hmm. to the grocery store, you get a receipt with everything, especially, you know, it's not that really that difficult. But I was just wondering if they mentioned anything. They, they did not. Like they did not. And um, uh, I also raised the issue of the paper uh, registration forms that are dropped off at MVA. And that there's no chain of um, what custody, custody. Thank you. I never remember that term. Uh, and everybody just sort of sure. was silent. <laughs> but you know, so I mean, and I, I pointed that out as as part of there's still a need here to look at these issues. Everything is not being addressed with whatever these changes are in January. And January is very close, and we still haven't received any. Have you received anything from DMV on this? No. No. So. So the consensus is uh, I'll, ha I'll draft mm -hmm. something, and we'll have it ready to roll out in January. I, my I, I don't agree with that. I, my concern for it is that the the audits are going to go ahead. It doesn't matter who the committee chairman is. It, only the only concern would be that we'll be part of it. Uh, and I think they already know who the chairman are. I think they're, they're going to set up their agendas, and I just would like us to be on it before they get there. Just that's my last comment on it. Um, if it wasn't for the time of year, I'd I'd uh, I'd agree with you more. But I think things are going to be pretty much lost between now and January anyway. You know, is what I what I fear. Does it make sense to see whether the county's um, office in Annapolis can help us with what who who's assigned to the committee for the future and, and when they might know? Well, right. Uh, because uh, if, if it turns out that we know today who the members of the committee are going to be, then we can send it to those people, and we don't have to wait. If if they haven't chosen them yet, then there's really no. Uh, I believe it's uh, uh, Senator uh, Madalino is uh, our member on the committee, uh, on that committee. You know that, yeah, he may know as well. But so I, he, I would, he might you know, well but, know. But, yeah, but you're sure. thinking of the I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure, sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure <coughs> Melanie would know. Yeah. If it, you know, if it. Oh, I see. You were thinking of. I was thinking the county government has a, a, oh, 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 a, a, a lobbyist you know, who, whose job it is is to know those things. Okay. Um, I'll check and see if the then we'll be in touch and if if we know we'll we'll move ahead okay uh, I, is there anything else that uh, of, of note from the meeting that uh, that you want to add no I don't think so thank you okay um, in your packet is a <coughs> uh, memorandum from the state board to the election directors uh, notifying us the cost of the proposed new voting system. Um, and as I stated, um, our staff is over at the um, Annapolis office um, looking at the new voting system. Additionally, the process is in place that the state board is requesting volunteers to serve uh, on various committees from the local boards and the request was made to the director uh, before the confirmation of the committee members. The committees that the state has set up are project management, voting systems, polling place logistics, communications, election judges, LBE requirements. Uh, to date, uh, Allison has been appointed to the overall planning committee. Leslie Woods has been appointed to the development of the election judge training materials. Uh, that would be the election judge committee working group. Alberto Zalea has been recommended, and I uh, sent an email urging that he be recommended for communications for out communications committee. And um, I've been recommended for project management. Um, so that's now those committee selections are not final. Um, maybe Allison, because she's on the oversight committee. Would, would you, do you want to talk about that at all? You've had, what, two meetings? 
Yeah, we really had um, two conference calls and then just one uh, organizational discussion among the three of us who were on the, the sub part that I'm co-chairing. Um, Sarah Hilton with the State Board and Alicia Alexander from Prince George's County and I are, um, actually it's the, the way that the state has set up their work groups, they have a, they have a, uh, what Margaret referred to as the, the overall group is actually a, a, a group of chairs, of co-chairs of these subgroups, and so it's the communications subgroup work group that they set up that is um, myself from Montgomery, Alicia from Prince George's County, and then Sarah Hilton from the State Board are, are overseeing or you know, working together on. Um, and that's also the group that um, Margaret has recommended and I would really like to have um, Dr. Z join us on with all of the, the work that he does. And we've had some preliminary discussions about things like making sure that we develop materials in languages other than just the English and the Spanish that we put out as polling place, um, you know, on how to use the new voting equipment, things like that. Um, the group that I am a, it, it really it's all been very organizational at this point, and it's a matter of the state appointing us to the spreadsheets that they want us to use to communicate through. Um, but the group that I'm assigned to focus on is communications, effectively internal and external. So we're trying to really focus in on the things that we need to focus on between the state and Mayo and preparing for the Mayo Conference and making sure that we have educational information sessions that are useful for people. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, trying to improve some of our, really we have very little at this point, a lot of information about what's you know, information that we can pass along to voters about what the changes are going to look like. There's so much we don't know yet about what the rules are going to, you know, what the regulations are going to be that are going to be written. Um, so we really need to try to, you know, pull that information together in order to then be able to communicate it along to voters. Um, uh, a, you know, more than the information itself, I'm wondering if you will get a sense of the kind of cost uh, that's going to be involved for us for outreach. Uh, in other words, the, the types of material, are they going to focus on the, the type of materials, mm -hmm. um, the uh, various avenues of communication that, you know, need to be reached and uh, messaging that's going to be done around that, etc. Uh, we don't need the content yet, but it seems to me we need the overarching, you know, framework for it, if you will. Right, and that that was part of our initial discussions. You know, we've got pending budget decisions at the local level and at the state level that we're all sort of in a, a waiting posture on at this point. Well, it's a two-way it's a two-way street agency. there. We we got to know we what to money. ask for. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, certainly our budget people are going to say, you know, mm -hmm. tell me what you're talking. How much? You know, 50000 100000 uh, What? You know, what is it? Uh, I'm dreaming, obviously, with those numbers, but, uh, you know, uh, right. seriously, uh, you, you know, in terms of what mm -hmm. this involves. Yeah, and, and, and I'm sorry I had to walk out of the room for a minute, but it's also going to be helpful from my standpoint to know what exactly they're going to do and, and what are they going to do that will reach the Montgomery market because that will then determine what we have to do on our own. And typically they haven't done a whole lot for the Montgomery market because it's so expensive. Mm. <coughs> Does the December 17th date on this document mean that that's when it goes to the Board of Public Works? Yes. So it's not actually a finally approved contract? That is correct. Happened. But this is public. Yes, it is. Okay. And it was also um, that if you go to the Board of Public Works website, mm -hmm. it has, it's on there. Oh, yeah. Okay. I also, it was included in your packet. Yeah. It's this packet. It shows the two top bidders. So, it'll be low bid. <coughs> oh, yeah. By quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the first payment is due. Yes, that's what they're saying. Yes. When? 
April first. No, April Fool's Day. No. 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 Oh, April first. What? Yeah. Yeah. And the second one, April. Mm -hmm. And uh, are they are they billing us at that point? That's yes. that's that's. Wow. But this hasn't been approved. Uh, what? It won't until the contract, the Board of Public Works will take their action, and then it goes back to the State Board Administrator, right. who will negotiate the final contract, right. and then, uh, then the billing will come to us. So we don't have to pay in January. Oh, I'm sure we will. No. So it doesn't and matter if it's approved or not. No, pay. if it's not approved, obviously we won't go. And we don't pay for something we don't possess. Um, to, to that question, um, remember that we have been notifying the Office of Management and Budget, County Executive, and the County Council for several years that this was coming. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as we have a bill, um, an actual bill, we will notify them. We will have to pay it. Um, and if we have to, you know, if we have to go forward with a supplemental appropriation or if they choose to wait until the end of the year, um, and do a county executive or county council transfer, which is what they have tended to do in the past. Um, but when we get the bill, we'll have to pay it. And OMB and everybody is aware of that. We've How do they determine our proportion? It's based on the voter population. We are at... Which election? Um, it has gone up. We are now at, <coughs> seven, one seven, we're at 17 percent. Up since when? We just had the lowest turnout in the state in the last No, year. voter registration, voter not registration. turnout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't care about the turnout. They just care Where we're the highest, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I could hope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and that, uh, uh, that's it for the State Board of Election. Okay, thank you. Um, so the next item is uh, Board Attorney Kevin. Please. And I, and I do not have anything new to report. We have received no Freedom of Information Act requests in the last 30 days, and we do not have any pending litigation. Boy, that's the best report of the day, <laughs> Kevin. Short, shorter the point. <laughs> that's right. That's what you want to hear from the lawyers, right? Uh, old business. <coughs> um, is there anything from okay. old business? Um, the only thing is that I had under old business is in your packet was a statement, statements from the two early voting center judges, managers, one from Germantown and one from Four Park with regards to their interactions after from early voting. Um, well, is uh, uh, we're not taking that up under board observations, or uh, that would be that was the only thing I had under old business. Did you want to go to board observations? Oh no no no! I just meant I I didn't know whether that those uh, those letters came under that or not. Okay. Um, so then, the, is there anything else under old business from anyone? Uh, then the next item is the uh, follow-up to the uh, general election. Okay. Um, board observations. Some of the board members have forwarded uh, their observations and maps and polling place uh, recommendations. And um, uh, Le uh, not Lisa. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on her name. Our, G our uh, GIS person. Louise. Okay, I apologize. Louise is in the process of uh, making changes and I inspecting the various sites. Uh, I also received the attorney's observations, and we are also um, where there are polling place changes. We're looking at, uh, I'm sorry, polling place issues. We're going out there, and those are being reviewed also. And if there's anyone who else <coughs> wants to bring something to me that hasn't been brought to my attention. We'll be happy to work on that. Uh, okay. I have a question. The Roma you said that you sent to the polling place. That what is their role? What is their power? What they supposed to do when they are there? The Roma is is <coughs> generally a trainer, and what they're doing is trying to assist the judges primarily in opening up 
They will uh, do IT uh, tech issues. So for instance, if they're having problems with poll books talking to one another or booting things up or um, they, there are eyes in the polling place. Do they have the authority to tell the observer or somebody what to do, not to do, anything like that? No, that should come from the chief judge. Okay, that happened uh, pile. I don't know what is this pile. Elementary school, the pile. Middle school. Middle school. Middle school. school. Yeah. Pile middle school. When I went there, the judges said we had a observer was a little bit problem, and then we were talking, and I was helping with the traffic going there. One of the chief judges sitting behind the thing suddenly left because the pizza delivery was there. But I went there and talked to the lady she was observing behind the judges. And I talked to her, she said that uh, she mentioned to the judges that the, the, the people which are in the poll book, they are prompting, you know what prompting. They are, for example, if I go and tell my name, they will continue my name. When I said my address 41, they would read the whole thing, which is that's not legal, understand. Kevin can say that. And she brought it to the attention, and then the Romer was so rude, and love, 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 the whole story. And then I talked to Romer, so I said, yes. I told her she's supposed not to do that, not to do that. I advised the Romer, she better let the chief judges do the work, not you. Just stay out of it. I just want to be sure that if that's the case, they should know the limit they have when they are in the polling places. They cannot tell the people what to do. Let the chief judges do that work. It's a double-edged sword. I mean, what we're trying to do is the roamers are the trainers. They're the ones that have read the material, trained to the material, know the voting units, know the touch screen. And they are, and but on election day or the night before, it is the chief judge that's in charge. And um, sometimes when you're working with 40 plus people, uh, individuals overstep their bounds. But we'll definitely check this out yeah, and make the sure the that the Romer. When I was talking to the lady, the chief judge, the one person was standing by the poll book and having that piece of paper which he signed. And I told the next person in the set, can you see wh why sh he was standing there, not going to work? Evidently, the chief judges forgot to give that person the card that he can go and register because she rushed to do that. When she came back and I told her, I said, did you sign in? She then asked who I am, which I was there for some time. And then she was a little bit rude when I told her about the situation. She asked me, did you sign in? He said, I'm here for the last 15 minutes. I'm sure I signed in by now. But anyway, I just want to bring it to your attention. I did not say anything. I just did my job. I left. But I just want them to know that the Roma cannot tell people what to do, and then the judges should be more polite to the board. Okay. Uh, in terms of these observations, uh, Margaret, uh, the board observations, the attorney observations, uh, those that we've received from uh, outside organizations such as today's uh, and any that, you know, we've, we've gotten. Uh, we need a, a follow-up presentation uh, on those. I believe we did that after uh, the general election last time. Um, so that we can, you know, take them point by point and see, uh, you know, what we're doing yeah. to take care of it. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I don't know, maybe we're looking at uh, February time frame for that. I, I know there's still a lot on, on your plate uh, for, you know, January, but let's, let's set, uh, does that sound like a reasonable time, February, yes. to yes. have a presentation on that? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Terrific. Uh, yes, David. Would this be an appropriate time to talk about um, the closing judges? Uh, <coughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, since we're we're talking about the, uh, about the election. observation, sure. Okay, um, as as board members know, I asked the question about how many closing judges we had in the 2014 election, and um, 
at my place today is a list of the judges. If I counted correctly, 184 for the general and 193 for the primary. Um, and I guess um, there's also a, a list of every judge in every precinct that I haven't had a chance to, to, to look at. But I guess my question is, you, Margaret, you said that the goal was two closing judges per precinct. Does that mean that if we divide by two, we'll get roughly the number of precincts where we had closing <coughs> judges, so there's roughly in the 90s uh, of, of, out of 250 precincts where we had closing judges? Or are there places where we have one and not two? Or are there places that we have more than two? If there's not a closing judge <coughs> for the polling place, then the chief judge is responsible for bringing that the material. Okay, but if there's 184 people who are labeled as closing judges, I assume that means that they didn't work the whole day, they only worked part of the day. That's correct. And does that mean that, for the general, for example, when there's 184 closing judges, does that mean that we had closing judges in 92 precincts, two per precinct, or does it necessarily work that way? You have to have, the goal is to have two closing judges per precinct and not belong to the same political party. And that doesn't include the chief judge. That is You're correct. saying independent of chief judges. Right. Okay. Now, so, if, but the 184, does that mean, I, I think what I'm hearing is there were some precincts that didn't have a closing judge. That Mo is correct. Most, most precincts, it sounds like. Well, most. Yeah. Nine, that, that would mean 90, only out 90, 90 out of 250, unless, unless they're, they're not in pairs. And that, that's what I'm asking. How many precincts well, had closing Well, that's how come we gave you a copy of the list of... Well, yeah, and if I spend the rest of the day, I can go through it and find out the answer to the question that I asked you on Friday um, by going through and counting up how many judges there are. But my question is... Are there instances where we have one closing judge and not two? Because you keep telling us the goal is two closing judges, but you're not telling us that that's actually how they're deployed. What I'm interested in knowing is, okay, we have 184 people who are closing judges. How do we decide where to send them? Well, the closing judges will sign up for a specific area. They will say, I'm willing to work in Silver Spring, Germantown, and then we try to find a polling place with an in for an individual uh, that's close to wherever they request to work, and then find someone that will work with them to close down the polling place. So, for instance, and it is entirely possible that in cer certain instances, a uh, we only have one closing judge. So we will ask the chief judge of the opposite political party, uh, well, basically we have to tell them that we were unable to recruit a closing judge, so you will have to return the material. So, so we don't know how many precincts where we had one closing judge, where we had two closing judges, unless we go through this document and, I, and pick them out. Can I, I add one more thing to it? So I, 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 was this given to everybody or just to me? I think just you. you. Were ju you asked, yeah, mm -hmm. just you. So this is everybody who signed up to work as a closing judge? This is judge? everyone that worked. Oh, oh this is everyone that worked? At, at a poll. At a poll. Because mm -hmm. I had I had polling places where closing judges did not show up. It, and, if they, right? and if they didn't show up, they're not on this list, is what you're saying? That's correct. And when it says CLS-C, what does the dash C mean? Consolidated precinct. Which, which which means that they are the closing judge for more than one precinct? No, that that precinct that they were at, if you look over in the left-hand column, right, you'll has, see it, two it, precinct right, it has numbers. two different precincts, but yeah. does that mean that the, clo that the closing judge is, is working both of them? They're in the same location. They're in the same, same location. Same yeah, location, yeah, yeah, same consolidated precinct. Okay. So it's two precincts in one location. Okay. Or maybe three. Well, would it be possible for us to get... Um, uh, an indication as to, um, I'd like to get a list of the precincts that didn't have any and the precincts that had one um, closing judge. My concern is is that um, I think that we could, uh, first of all, I think obviously we have to do a lot more to recruit people for this and particularly recruit people who are tech savvy for this in order to assist um, the judges. And, and we all know that the chief judges who have worked since seven in the morning 
um, are being asked to do a lot to be able to get this done in an efficient fashion at the, at the end of the day. Um, my concern would be whether we can um, deploy our closing judges in a way to get our results in faster, perhaps by uh, concentrating them in places that have to drive further to get to, uh, to, get to our office, because we're not centrally located in the county. Um, and, um, but also, um, hopefully, we can um, make a real effort. I think that uh, there's a big difference between recruiting people to work a more than 12 hour day and recruiting people to work for a few hours in the evening. Yeah, I, um, I mean, I would, I know. would think this would be an easier task right. in a way to, right. and, to get, um, although it's, it's, yeah. it's later in the day. It's later in the day, and of course now it has a lot of public attention, so a little more pressure. But uh, for people who are who aren't available for the whole day, I think this would be um, um, an opportunity for them. Um, but. Um, so it sounds like we can't just assume that there's 90 precincts that have that have closing judges and 160 that don't. Um, but I'd like to know um, what those uh, what those numbers are. I would like to point one thing out with regards to um, you know as we have discussed in previous meeting, we are looking at different uh, processes to collect this data so that it becomes more timely. Uh, but we're going from precincts that are assigned 10, 12, 20 voting units to precincts where there will be one optical scanner, or maybe two. And those tap, so all that will be required of the closing judge or the closing, closing judge or chief judge is to remove the PC memory card or flash memory card or whatever it is instead of trying to go from voting unit from voting unit to voting unit to accumulate to print out the results then go to the zero unit accumulate the totals of those 20 units and then begin the process of transmitting those results I mean the the time immediately condenses because you only have one or two Based on the preliminary recommendations of the State Board of Elections, we will only have two scanners per polling, one scanner for every precinct that is under 3,000, as, as I recall, and then uh, two if it has 3,001. So the Im immediate contraction of work on the part of the election judges is going to impact the way we collect <coughs> the data or collect the results, the tabulated results from the polling place. So I think that's one of the things that we need to look at in terms of the processes. And that's how come one of the things that, why I was very pleased that Leslie Woods would be part of the planning process for the election judges is so that we could address that in the future to make sure that these results come in quicker. Now, may I go back over what you just said and see if I understand it? The chief judge can go to the scanner, take out the memory card, go right to the modem and put it in. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't say that. Hear no, they that. still okay. have to drive it in here. No, what the, no. the chief no, not judge, sure. working with the closing judge of an opposite political party, whoever it is, yeah, mm -hmm. needs to, at the end of the evening, they have to go through the function of closing the unit. They have to print two tapes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I understand that piece. And but then I they meant take to get all of the PC memory cards and accumulate them to one unit so that there's an overall total <coughs> that is posted at the polling place. And then in, in the new perfect the new way we're gonna do it. No, no that's what, I'm just talking no. about the new one. Oh the it'll new just one. be uh, do, all do I'm talking about yet? the new what one is the one memory card. No, we don't. They'll just have the one memory card from the scanner. Or two. Or two. If we have two, yeah. And then they can call that right in or put that right in. Depending, again, it depends, uh, you know, there's two, as I understand the RFP, there's two, mo two modem possibilities. One is cellular and one is the current uh, copper wire system that we currently have. So, it can so be immediate. instead of trying to transmit 2,800 right. or 250, we're just down 
uh, well, we'll still have 250 precincts, but uh, instead of trying to transmit 2,800 results from all these but different I'm voting units, where, where the number is going to drop dramatically. Right. Got it. Mm -hmm. And the closing processes will improve also because they'll be much simpler. And the other thing is, is that it will, all they'll have to do besides a flash memory or a PC memory card or whatever it is, is that we'll, they'll be pulling a ballot box from what the ballot bin, and that will also come. So That's we'll have right. the backup. They still have to drive in, though, with it. Not if you're modeming the results from either that location or a satellite location. So you're no longer well, going to have well, judges driving in. Well, but you still have to you still have to bring in the ballots. Oh yeah, you yeah. still have well, to. Well, that was my that yeah. was my question. Well, all all I was asking about was yeah. in, so. getting the results. All I was asking about is getting the results in, and so that's going to be immediate. Right. Okay. Well, in yeah. the perfect, yeah. well, no, you no, know, no, no. in the perfect world, <coughs> once the voting unit after the last voter has voted. There will be some type of closing procedure that the state's going to mandate, and then that, whether it's a PC memory card or flash memory card or flash memory thing, uh, those will be. And the, again, you know, the RFP calls for either cellular transmission or the what we currently have, which is the modem, hard copper wire telephone lines, it'll be transmitted and instead of trying to transmit for 2,700 to 2,800 voting units, you're talking about a considerably lower number. But we don't know yet what the procedure is for the closing of these polls. And as I understand it, part of what our tech staff is doing today is learning more about the system to try and figure that out. So. I'm a little confused as to whether what you just described, I mean, I, I'd love to have a perfect world too, but I'm, I'm not sure that what you just described is just uh, a guess based on the fact that there's going to be fewer um, machines to deal with. It could be that you could have fewer machines and still have a lengthy process for closing them. Um, we don't know what that, what that process is yet. In the meantime, we know that we had a serious problem in the last, at least the last two elections. We could argue as to it could be before that. We have a lot of people asking us questions about why did that happen. Um, I know I'm personally, and I know that everybody at this table, very interested in trying to figure out all the different things that we can do to make things better, some of which will be relevant for the new system some of which may not be, but will still be lessons for us on kind of quality checks and ways to make processes better. Um, and um, while it's possible that we'll need fewer people, it's also possible that we won't need fewer people. Um, because when you it, said fewer people, fewer, ju fewer judges to close the polls because we only have two scanners instead of multiple touchscreen machines. I don't believe I've ever said that you'll need fewer judges. Well, that's what I thought you said. It seems in, in to me that we can't minutes. decide this until we decide what that. what we're going to get. That this is a, a, a January or February no, no, discussion. No, I, 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 I agree. I, I, I was suggesting that what I what I was interested in is to have an indication as to how we deployed our closing judges in the past. Um, we can decide, obviously, only after we know more about the system as to how to deploy them in the future. But you know, one of the things that we can take into consideration is the impact on getting the results in faster, um, which might be a reason where, where if somebody wants to um, be a closing judge and they want to work right down the street from here, um, that we might want to encourage them to go somewhere that's uh, further away because the person who works right down the street from here is going to get their results in here pretty fast. Um, whereas, right, and my question was, that we, we don't have to bring, we have to bring stuff in, but not the results. Well, that's the, the thing, card. you see, yeah. we really, the goal is to get more of the results electronically than physically bringing the stuff here, because they're still going to have to close well, down the two different well, not, not, not to mention, this yes. is the 21st so, century, so bringing yes. stuff here seems a little bit antiquated. Um, are we stuck with using dial-up modem as our 
means of communication that or be a decision by the state board is there anything that can be done to influence that decision because one would think that again we're in the year 2014 by 2016 <coughs> um, you, would, you, you would think that there would you would think that there are digital communications that are used for complicated confidential large transactions every day using encryption I, I'm not the expert maybe on this we at can all. hire Sonny to help us with it um, yeah, right um, but uh, Home Depot. Uh, um, but uh, all I'm suggesting is is that um, it seems like we are using um, I'm not even sure if 1990s technology would be a good way to describe it but we're you know but it seems like we're using 1990s technology you know more than 20 years later in order to in order to get our returns and that that and that our quote unquote new system is um, is still planning to use 1990s technology in you know in order to to do this I would just like to say that again we are the receiver of this equipment and each year based on the discussions that the state board has with the legislature we've had greater and greater secu security requirements <coughs> added that have affected the transmission of modem results from the polling place um, there's I'm, I'm not the IT specialist here and I wish she was here but um, over the course of time these security steps have made the process um, more cumbersome for the election judges the um, connection requires certain types of actions that need to occur before <coughs> the transmission is allowed to proceed to the state server. All I'm suggesting is that it would be help. And one of the things, and as I said earlier, <coughs> Leslie Woods has been assigned to the committee that's going to be developing the election judge material uh, and developing the training material for this new voting system. My conversation, and one of the reasons I encouraged this to occur, was because she could help address this issue of trying to expedite <coughs> election results, whether it's to this location or the state board. And so I'm more than happy to address that issue in the future when we know more about the uh, equipment and what the state requirements are going to be. But quite honestly, Margaret, I don't think it, it matters if you have two scanners or less. You're still going to need the amount of judges, and you're still going to need voting judges. Uh, uh, and I don't reasons, disagree right? with you. So I think, correct me if I'm wrong, what you're saying is the amount of judges, opposing judges that we have are not enough. I don't think I'm the only one saying that. I think I don't think there's a disagreement. I, 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 I don't think it's a, I don't think there's a disagreement about that. What I'm trying to understand is how many precincts do we have where we have two? How many precincts do we have where we no. had one? And how many precincts did we have where we had none? And admittedly, we don't know how many we need yet for 2016. I understand. Well, that. except I you know, I don't yeah. I would say that there's no need to change what the goal is right. now. I think two right. per precinct, yeah. one from each it's party, reasonable. or yeah, you right, know, right. one from different two different yeah. parties, uh, should be the goal regardless. Right, so that's five hundred. But but I but that's I that's right. But I still think it would be useful for us to know what we had in order to and and and, and what we had wasn't enough. <laughs> no, we, we clearly we clearly know that it wasn't enough. But I think that we also should be thinking about if we're not going to have enough because we can't force people to do it. Um, if, if you know, we have to think about a how, what kind of creative things can we do to recruit people for this task in particular, and b what kind of creative things can we do to deploy people in order to get the most bang for our buck for however many we have. Um, and um, well, I think you know, that's true, and I think that part of of it is going to be dependent on once we know what we're yes. talking about. Yes. And then we can sell it in a way, hey, this isn't the same old system. You're not going to be sitting somewhere till midnight, one in the morning. You know, this is going to operate this way, blah, blah, blah. And for, people, and, and for people who are doing this, they can work a full day of work and still come over afterward. Exactly. You know, but, but, um, 
But there I, is, I'm, I'm gonna, there is I'm, a I'm part of gonna, it that... I'm just going to renew the request because uh, I, apparently I haven't got an answer yet that says I'm going to get the information that I'm looking for. I don't think it should be up to board members to have to go through precinct by precinct and figure out how many judges there are. Okay, so my question was... Uh, you want to know numbers? Do you want to know what precinct? Yes. I want to know which precincts had two, which precincts had one, and which precincts had none. Yes. Closing, yes. closing okay. judges. Now, if the chief judge served as a closing judge, that doesn't count that. as a closing no. judge because they had to These work twelve be hours be before they did it, yeah. and okay. or thirteen that's, hours before that's, they did it. That's, that's, um, and, I think, and I will share this information with the entire board. Please do. Thank you. Okay. I think the geographic, to me, geographically, to get a better that's sense to see if there right. are areas geographically yeah. that you are not yeah. actually yeah. covering yeah. with closing yeah. judges. Right. Right. Well, because, because the, the reason that, that led to my making this request is that my understanding is is that in another of the big counties, they do allocate their judges to the further away places in order to expedite getting the results, yeah. you know, from, that's, from, that's, from, that from those places. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you. we'll m move on that. Uh, what's a reasonable time frame for that, Margaret? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, Tomorrow. Oh. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. We'll have it tomorrow. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I believe new business. Uh, yes, new business is our final final item on the agenda. I'm sorry. Attorney observations. Attorney observations. I've already submitted. Oh, uh, he submitted them, that? and we're okay. going to uh, right. at the February meeting. We'll go through all those. Uh, the, bo the boards, the attorneys, and any of the outside okay. organizations. Um, so, new business, new business is, is on your uh, page, I believe. New business. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, new business, yes. Um, I just wanted you to be aware that um, there will be some capital construction related to schools, the county, um, building availability. And so after significant decisions are made about the capital construction budget, uh, we will come to the board with regards to uh, some of the issues that we're going to be looking at. So for instance, the old Silver Spring Library is closing, it's moving to a new location. How will that impact? The Wheaton Recreation Center is scheduled for demolition in 2015. That'll impact your early voting center. If that's not going to be um, demolished, the board will have to make a decision about whether or not that. Brown Park Elementary School was scheduled for construction in this last fiscal year. Um, it was taken off of the list. Um, the question is, will the schools have money to redo their construction or rehab this coming year, or is it going to be pushed off? And so. We are in contact with the schools as well as the county to find out what this capital construction budget is going to be and how it's going to impact the payment structure. So we will get this information to you as soon as we get it. Yeah, David? I'd like to make a motion um, based on our conversation about early voting sites before. We made very clear that we were interested in the um, Wheaton Rescue Squad site when it was available and that the, rest and that the rec center was an alternative until the rescue squad was available. The rescue squad is now open. Oh, it is. It is. It is. So, so um, my motion is is that um, we indicate um, that we would be that we plan to move the voting site from the Wheaton Recreation Center to the Wheaton Rescue Squad for the 2016 election. Uh, okay. Yeah, so may I have a question? <coughs> Can we just do that, or do we have to negotiate with with them? You'll have to negotiate. <laughs> well, yeah, we have to negotiate all of them. I mean, that's not... But yes. we ask to, Chris, we try to. Yeah. I've been in communications with the coordinator, the uh, event coordinator of the ballroom at the rescue squad. I will have to, uh, with your uh, approval, create a letter to the board. They are a private entity. They're volunteer. So there will need to be a letter that will go to the board. Their next board meeting would be the second uh, Tuesday in January, requesting or at least mapping out our expectations for an early voting center. And 
and then ask if they would be open to hosting us. Mm -hmm. At that time, they will approve, but more than likely, there will be a fee involved with that. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, it's been moved and seconded. A second. Um, okay. Open for discussion. Uh, to we will plan to move ahead to the new site to the rescue squad for the 2016 elections uh, and, and move forward with the necessary paperwork. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Good. Thank you all. Uh, I do know uh, the Brown Station, um, I, I heard specifically about that issue because, and I think that's one of the ones that was on the report today, uh, because where they moved to has a uh, transportation problem, public transportation problem. There's no easy way to, to get there by public the, transportation. The, the Thurgood Marshall where they moved to. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, think I, I, heard, I think I heard yeah. from the same person but that you did. I think the, the, the Brown uh, Station is one of those that's on again, off again in terms of construction, right? That's what happened. So that's why you're saying we have to wait to hear. Do we know the, the timing that we'll hear on these uh, other? It's my understanding that the capital construction recommendations will be coming out in January. Oh, okay. So hopefully we'll hear either in time for the late January board meeting or our February. So, so is the issue with Brown Station that they have not done the construction yet? That's correct. So we moved to another location because they were scheduled for construction mm -hmm. and the construction mm -hmm. didn't happen? Yeah. And, sure. they don't, and they don't like the new location. That's what we heard. Uh, is, 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 is that the problems with the new location, but it's not that the construction has been completed, it hasn't been started yet. That is correct. They were removed. And unfortunately, wow. the election calendar was such that at that point, we had to make the recommendations for the polling places, and there was no simple way to pull that pull back. And and that was also, and we had the same problem at other locations, where the school was under construction just during the summer, and but because of that, we can't have polling places in two different locations for one election. So we had to move the polling place because of the June date. As you recall, we had several locations that we couldn't get into in the primary, but we could, they were more than happy to have us come back in November. S but we, so, but we. Are, we. are we prohibited by law or regulation from moving the polling place from the primary to the general? Unless there's a really good reason is right, what but I, I always. But, but, but I would think that construction would be such a reason. I mean, if, you know, you but it has to be know. construction where uh, why you can't go back to where you were in the primary. Right, I understand. But what I'm saying is is that let's suppose that the Brown Station construction were were to be taking place. Usually they do do their, their construction after the school year. So you know, <coughs> they, they start at the end of June and it takes however long it, it takes them. And let's suppose just hypothetically that they started it in 2016. So it's entirely possible that we the primary the, the primary, primary election would be in one location and the general election would be in a different location because your primary location polling place could be under construction in November. Um, and I would think that um, that would be, that for, from our perspective, that would make more sense. Otherwise, we, would, we might be, you know, forced out of places for really, you know, for no, for, for no apparent reason other than, a, a, you know, a legal limitation. Um, David, when they that. decide for construction, they don't jump June and then all say we're going to do it in November. They know way ahead of time when the construction going to start. Well, apparently not in this instance. Not with Brown Station. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I understand what you're saying. Be the short and it, I guess my other question also would be: Is there anything that we can do? Is there anything that the school system can help us with in terms of planning these things? Um, because I understand some of it's just based on the availability of money, but some of it may, you know, we may have be, they may be able to have, help us with a backup plan because there's obviously lots of schools. Well, um, there's lots of schools, yeah. and the, but there's also the legal requirement that we cannot go to just any precinct. Sure. It has to be a precinct that abuts right. uh, the location, which was one of the issues at Brown Station Elementary School. So. Again, I would ask that the board allow us to hear from the schools in the county about what their capital construction budget is going to be. Kevin can get back to you. I'm going to tell you, though, that 
in the past when we have brought this issue before the state board, the state board highly frowns upon moving polling places around from the primary to the general because it just smacks of political right. well, well, and, and I, In general, I would totally agree that it's not a good idea to do, but if, you know, if you have a situation where you have a convenient location that's available for one election but not both, um, and the alternative is a less convenient location, to me it doesn't make sense to require people to use the less convenient location for both elections if a more convenient location is available for one. And I'll get you an answer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that I, I think that uh, I'll move we close the public and go to executive session. Uh, may we have a five minute break, yes, God, sure. please, in between. Thank you. Here, I can I know how to use that. <laughs> Thank you. No.